Hi, and welcome to Relationship Tips with the Pros. My name is Dawn Swan, and I'm a licensed professional counselor in Denver, Colorado. For the past several weeks, I've been doing this series to study and highlight the work of Drs. John and Julie Gottman. They're two of the leading couples therapy researchers in the United States today. And in my most recent portion of this series, I've been focusing in on their research specifically related to communication. So in the Gottman's research, they talk about two categories of couples, the masters and the disasters. The masters are thriving and growing in their relationships, staying strong and still in love with each other. The disasters are the exact opposite. They're barely holding things together and their relationships are not doing well. When the Gottmans studied the communication styles of the disasters, they noticed four specific problematic behaviors that the disasters used over and over again when they were trying to communicate. And they call these four behaviors the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Because when you see these behaviors in a relationship, you know that the end is near unless something is done to change it. So in the past three weeks videos, I have addressed the first three horsemen of the apocalypse, criticism, defensiveness, and contempt. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the fourth horseman of the apocalypse, which is something called stonewalling. Now, stonewalling at times is a little difficult to explain. It's not a word we typically use a whole lot uh, day to day, but I'm sure you've probably seen stonewalling at some point and maybe even done a little of it yourself. Um, what stonewalling looks like on the outside is kind of like this. It looks like a lot of nothing. It looks like silence. It looks like no facial expression, um, like blankness, nothingness, disengagement, disconnection. And so stonewalling is a behavior that the disasters used when they were in conflict. And one of the two parties would literally just go into this stonewall, blank, expressionless, reactionless mode of non-response. It's like they're still in the conversation, but they're not really in the conversation. They're certainly not participating. They've pretty much pulled the plug and disengaged. So that's what stonewalling looks like on the outside. But the interesting thing that the Gottmans discovered in their research, and they did a really unique kind of research. Um, they had a house that they called the Love Lab, and they would invite couples to come and live in the Love Lab for a few days, 24 hours, 48 hours. And while the couple was there, they would study their interactions by videotaping their conversations. Um, but they would also hook the couples up to heart rate monitors that they would wear the whole time they were in the in the lab and they would take blood samples before and after, you know, right before they left the house so that they could also gather physiological data about what was going on inside the participants' bodies in their physiology as they interacted with each other. So what they discovered about the people that would stonewall is that even though on the outside they would be stoic, really calm, on the inside their physiology was off the charts. Their heart rates were above 100 beats per minute. Um, oftentimes their breathing rate changed, their body temperature changed. So that's the really interesting thing about stonewalling is on the outside, it looks like a very calm, uneventful, maybe even a peaceful sea, but on the inside, their body is a hurricane of whirling physiology, sensations, and emotions. So basically what this feels like to the person who's experiencing it is they feel like they're completely overwhelmed. All systems are go. On the inside, they're basically in fight or flight mode. All their internal systems are revved up, ready for threat, ready to fight or to run away. While on the outside, the partner looking at them can't tell any of that is going on. So this is where it can be really confusing. And for the partner who's observing the stonewalling behavior, it can be incredibly frustrating because you're expressing yourself, you're trying to communicate and you're getting nothing back. And that's why is because on the inside, the systems are overloaded and the person who's stonewalling is basically shutting down. 
And it reminds me of the expression playing possum. I don't know if you've heard that. I spent some time growing up in South Georgia and we had lots of possums um, that were out in the woods. And um, this expression playing possum comes from when, when a possum is under threat, they will basically lay down and freeze and pretend to be dead until the predator or the threat has passed as a survival strategy. And stonewalling at times reminds me of this. It's kind of like the internal world of that partner has gone into hyperdrive. And basically what's happened is on the outside, they've gone into that freeze mode to wait for the threat to pass. Most people that are stonewalling, they're really doing it because they're overwhelmed, because they don't feel like they can safely engage anymore, and they just don't want to do more damage. So instead of interacting, they're just going to wait for the threat to pass. And again, I completely understand how difficult this is for the other partner on the receiving end. And oftentimes what happens is when a partner is stonewalling, the other partner will escalate and escalate even higher and higher just to get a reaction from their partner because it feels horrible to be shut out and to not have someone interacting with you. But it ends up having the opposite effect. It doesn't help the partner to open up. It actually keeps them in that hyper aroused mode and prevents them from calming down to a point that they could re-engage. So with each of the four horsemen, we've been talking about what it is, how it shows up, and then what's the antidote? What do we do to fix it or to get out of this cycle? So the antidote to stonewalling is something called self-soothing. Now, basically, self-soothing is the ability of an individual to make conscious decisions, conscious choices, and to exercise certain behaviors that will bring their body physiology back down to a calm and even state. You know, a lot of people don't even realize that you can do that. They kind of feel like, well, you know, I just get rubbed up sometimes and I have to just wait it out. Um, I don't really have the ability to calm it back down. I don't know how to do that. And so the good thing to know is that self-soothing is actually a set of skills that can be learned. You can learn how to do that. But it's very difficult to self-soothe if you're already overwhelmed and already at that heightened place and you're still trying to talk through an issue and in, emotions are still really intense. It's very difficult to self-soothe in that moment. What most people are going to need to do in order to self-soothe is, first of all, to take a break. Um, when you realize you have hit that point and you're stonewalling, the best thing you can do is to calmly say to your partner, like, hey, I'm overwhelmed. I can feel myself shutting down. I really need to take a break. And we can come back to this at a later point. Now, sometimes people who, who stonewall, they're not very good at doing that. So if you're on the other end and you can see your partner starting to shut down, something that you can do too is to offer a break. Sometimes the worst thing you can do is just keep going and just keep pushing if somebody's already overwhelmed. You're not going to end up anywhere good. So if you're on the receiving end of the stonewalling, what you can do is say, hey, it looks like you're shutting down. I'm not sure if you're with me anymore. Do you need a break? Do we need to take a time out and come back to this later? because really that's what needs to happen. And so I'm gonna to put together another video that talks specifically about strategies for self-soothing because it's more than I can go into tonight um, in this video, but that's what needs to happen. The antidote to stonewalling is self-soothing and most often people need to take a time out in order to self-soothe. Now, taking time outs, I could put together a whole nother video and maybe I will do it for that, but like the proper way to take a time out. So what I would encourage you not to do, don't just storm off and not say where you're going. Don't just leave without giving your partner some indication that, hey, I'm overwhelmed and I really need to take a time out. Because if you do that, if you just leave the conversation without saying anything, without asking for a break, it really feels like abandonment to the other person. And they're most of the time going to get really upset because they feel like you're just walking away from them and abandoning the conversation that's important to them. Now, for the partner who is 
on the receiving end of the stonewalling, again, don't just keep pushing through. So many times people think if I just say it again, if I just say it loud, or if I just say it in different words, maybe I'll get a response. But you're not going to get the response you're looking for until that partner who's stonewalling has a chance to calm down and get into a better emotional and physical state. Um, so that's kind of the summary of stonewalling and its antidote, self-soothing. And please keep your eyes posted. I will put together another video soon on different strategies for self-soothing and talking a little bit more about what that is and how you can do it. But for now, I hope that helps you to recognize stonewalling and at least a first step to take a time out and try to calm down before you come back to the issue. And don't forget to come back to the issue. That's one point that I did leave out. You know, if you're going to take a time out, then do say to your partner, look, I need a break, but I will agree to come back to this in 30 minutes or in a couple of hours or maybe not until tomorrow morning or maybe tomorrow evening after work. But do give an estimate of a time when you would be willing to revisit it because that will help the other person to calm down and to accept the time out and know that you're going to come back, to know that you're not leaving the conversation permanently, but that you're committed to continuing it at a better time. I hope this is useful and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. But hey, we got through the four horsemen and I hope you found it helpful.